Hello and welcome to Louis Times. I am Kangana Sharma and now let's have a look at today's top 10 news that created headlines. Justices Madan Lokur and AP Shah, former judges of Supreme Court and the Delhi High Court respectively, have invited Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for a public debate midway through the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. A letter addressed to the duo by Justices Lokur and Shah, as well as former editor of the Hindu N. Ram, says that a proposal is non-partisan and in the larger interest of the nation. The former judges and the journalists say that a public debate on a non-partisan and non-commercial platform would greatly benefit citizens and strengthen the democratic process. After being closed for the winter season, the revered Kedarnath, Gangotri and the Yamunotri temples in Uttarakhand opened for devotees on Friday. Nestled in the Garhwal Himalayas, these temples annually shut their doors as snow blankets the region, only to reopen with the arrival of summer. Renowned actress Vijayanti Mala and Telugu superstar Chiranjeevi were honoured with Padma Awards by President Draupadi Murmu on Thursday. The prestigious ceremony, graced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah, was held at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in the national capital. In a recent tweet, the Defence Research and Development Organisation announced that the Defence Materials and Stores Research and Development Establishment has achieved a breakthrough by developing liquid ramjet fuel for an advanced air-breathing engine. The DRDO stated that the fuel underwent successful testing at the ramjet testbed on 8th of May. In a bid to enhance ease of doing business, SEBI has proposed simplified disclosure norms for issuing non-convertible securities. Sensitive personal information of issuers in offer documents will be replaced with QR codes and web links. The public can provide feedback until 30th of May. India has exited its military from Maldives after a demand by President Mohammad Mizu, who is more focused on strengthening ties with China. The Indian troops, accompanied by two helicopters and an aircraft, were involved in marine surveillance and medical evacuation operation on the islands. The announcement coincided with a visit by Maldivian Foreign Minister Musa Zamir to India. President Joe Biden said that he would not supply offensive weapons that Israel could use to launch an all-out assault on Rafah, the last major Hamas stronghold in Gaza, over concern for the well-being of more than one million civilians sheltering there. Biden acknowledged that civilians have been killed in Gaza by the type of heavy bombs that the US has been supplying, his first validation of what administration critics have been loudly protesting, even if he stopped short of taking responsibility. In a strategic move aimed at offsetting China's significant presence in Sri Lanka, President Ranil Vikramasinghe's administration is increasingly fostering collaboration with Indian companies for crucial projects. The Sri Lankan government recently approved a 20-year power purchase agreement with India's Adani Green Energy, involving a $442 million investment to establish two wind power stations in Manar and Purunir, totaling 484 megawatts. This decision follows a recent award of management rights for the Matala Rajapaksha International Airport which was previously funded by China to an India-Russian joint venture. The Indian embassy in Iran confirmed that five of the Indian sailors on board of an Israeli-linked vessel that was seized by Tehran were released on Thursday. It also said that the sailors had departed the country during the evening. Sharing details of the release, the Indian embassy also thanked the Iranian authorities for their close coordination with the embassy and Indian consulate in Bandar Abbas. Climate activist Greta Thunberg, renowned for her impactful protests, has been fined in Sweden for obstructing the entrance to parliament during climate demonstrations. Thunberg and four others faced trial after being forcibly removed by the police. Thunberg received a $550 fine, adding to her previous convictions for similar offences. Thunberg stays devoted to climate advocacy amidst all.